No CP, in the ancient world of Chows, primitive love caressed the skirts of the earth, giving birth to three children. The sky, the deep sea, and the mountains. The sky is tightly connected to the earth. Once crossed, Renato became a child unexpectedly born to the earth when Clonus in time and space was taken away by the sky. Looking at the terrifying sky and the dilapidated earth, Renato deeply felt his own weakness. I hope it's not too late to work hard at this moment. Chapter 1 Birth You are listening at NovelFull.audio The chaotic world of Chows, this is a new world that has just emerged from disorder and has built a rough framework of rules. The ancient and original deities represent the masters of chaos and the creators of this world, named after him. This ancient deity does not know where it originated, but he has left behind a sufficiently vast myth in this world. The first child born to this ancient deity, the elder sister of the primitive gods, the cornerstone of the world, symbolizes the goddess Gaia of the earth. This should have been a goddess of extraordinary status and revered by thousands of people. At this moment, this great primordial god has lost her glory, symbolizing the need for stability in the power of the earth and the inability of the world to be easily utilized. Therefore, this great primordial god can only watch as her eldest son and husband are taken away by the god king of the sky, Uranus, who secretly hid and protected her youngest son, symbolizing the destructive cloness of time and space. Perhaps it is the dignity of the primitive gods and the original deities that does not allow the goddess Gaia to cry loudly, but as a mother god, her innate love for children fills the earth with pain. These pains slowly turned into a tear at the corner of Gaia's eyes and fell to her feet. The painful tear of the goddess Gaia fell to the ground and quickly swelled, transforming into a huge lake in the blink of an eye, symbolizing the pain of the goddess of the earth turning into a saltwater lake in the earth. After tears fell, the goddess may also feel better. Watching her husband and son disappear, Gaia finally slowly took off her clothes and entered the newly emerged saltwater lake. Standing in the saltwater lake, let the saltwater take away the things that made this goddess lose her dignity. The water is a bit cool, but these coolness can also make the goddess's heart clear a bit. Now the cruel god King Uranus can no longer be called her husband in the heart of the goddess Gaia. Perhaps she had once fallen in love with Uranus immensely, but the sky god, who had been eroded by the power of the god king, repeatedly wounded Gaia as a mother, taking away those newborn children from a mother's side. It wasn't until recently that the sky god, who was seeking pleasure, discovered his last youngest son after the end. As soon as she thought about her youngest son being enslaved by her father like her eleven brothers and sisters, the slightly calmer heart of the Mother Earth experienced boundless pain. The primordial gods have already represented a part of the world, and as the foundation of all things, Gaia's emotions at this moment make the entire life of the Earth feel an inexplicable sadness. The weeds by the lake have also lost their former vitality, all gently sticking to the ground. Fortunately, this goddess is not a fragile existence. On the contrary, as a heavy earth, she has an incredibly resilient heart. As a mother who has lost her child, there is a terrifying flame burning in her heart. Ha! Huh. The goddess Gaia, who had prepared her appearance and was about to return to her temple, suddenly stopped in her tracks. Her emotions will affect all things on the earth, which is predetermined. Her status is noble and among all the gods born today, only her earthly lineage has the largest number of gods. Unless we include those semi-gods who do not hold any religious positions, Ningfu, that makes the oceanic lineage slightly more numerous. However, Haiyang is also the descendant of this Gaia goddess. There is no objection to honoring the mother of all gods. So whether it's animals or plants on the earth, it's normal for her mood to change. But now, she's too weak, and the earth has been damaged by the sky. Even with such nobility, her mood cannot always affect the operation of the earth. But all the plants and trees around this saltwater lake fell to the ground, and even if her mood slightly recovered at this moment, there was no improvement at all. Instead, they all slowly turned into soft mud and began to decompose bit by bit, turning into nutrients and returning to the earth. 
Although it is only a small amount of nutrition, it is enough for the Mother Earth, who is about to sleep forever at this moment, to sustain herself for a longer time. If such changes continue, perhaps one day in the future, the goddess Gaia will be able to completely break free from her current weakness and use time to build a tower that is enough for her to return to the noble throne of the primordial god. The will of the world has also noticed the changes here, and will not let go of anything beneficial to the world. In just an instant, these changes were organized and assimilated by the world of Chaos, and a small dark brown crystal emerged from somewhere, floating on that piece of land. This deity symbolizes a phenomenon that has evolved due to the sadness and weakness of the earth. Looking at this clergy, a faint light flashed in the eyes of the goddess Gaia, and a hint of joy flashed across her desperate and numb face. Just as the goddess reached out to take the priesthood, which symbolized the return of the plant to the earth after death, the priesthood suddenly flew out of the hand of the god of the earth, and even rushed into the lake at a speed that the weak primitive god had not even reacted to, as the tears of sadness had just flowed out and turned into salt water. At this moment, the goddess Gaia realized. The essence left in her body when Alanos wooed her just now has been dissolved with water. The earth and life coexist. The sky has even crossed the powerful and terrible great divine power. After the mother god of the earth entered the saline lake, life combined with another powerful essence of life, and the saline lake standing on the earth served as a hotbed. The mother of the earth is already too weak. She is no longer able to conceive a new deity with her own body. Perhaps this instinct has caused her last youngest son to be conceived from within her body to outside. This also allowed the goddess Gaia, who was originally at least a medium divine power, to see Ningfu for the first time without any divine power. However, this was just a moment ago. Now that there is a priest named Decay and the origin of Decay that has been appreciated by the world, the almost zero breath suddenly begins to grow and soon approaches the medium divine power. After all, as gods who have made progress in the world since their birth, they have sufficient qualifications to protect themselves from external invasion. Gaia sighed lightly, but it didn't count as nervousness. If she had a decaying priesthood and origin that could quickly restore herself, this child could be considered her son, the son of her and the god-king of the sky. In the rules of the world of Chaos, no matter what glory their children receive, as a mother goddess, she will not lack the illumination of this glory. Moreover, this source of decay originally belongs to the earth, and even the divine king of the sky will not receive as much benefit as she does. But such a good opportunity slipped away from before my eyes, and this goddess of the earth still felt a bit reluctant. Just as the goddess was planning to coldly deal with the child in the sky, the child seemed to sense something, and the moderate divine aura rapidly declined, almost falling to the point of falling from the divine position in the blink of an eye. And those extra divine powers flew into the body of the earth, relieving even one thousandth of the pressure on this already riddled primitive god. Now this decaying god with moderate divine power has been knocked down, leaving only a weak divine power. You should know that those divine powers were originally intended to be gifts from the world, not to say that decaying powers have reached a moderate level of divine power. It may take some time to change back to their previous appearance. But even if it's just a weak divine power, it can still be considered a god in the end. The life of the primordial god is guaranteed. Because they represent a natural or man-made phenomenon that is beneficial to the world, even the weakest and weakest divine power will be protected by the world. Even the king of the gods at this time, Uranus, has never dared to take any heavy action against any of the original gods under his rule. Feeling the weak breath in the lake, I looked at the almost transparent body. The goddess Gaia's eyes couldn't help but show a hint of heartache. The goddess once again entered the saltwater lake and gently picked up an almost transparent baby. This is what she has never seen before. The children she gave birth to, whether they were the sky, the ocean, the hills, or the twelve titans who had already been taken away, were born with at least moderate divine power and an extremely powerful priesthood, and were noble primordial gods. Therefore, these children were born knowing them and were young people at least eighteen or nineteen years old, almost all of whom were adults. 
a newborn baby without any changes, which makes the goddess of the earth difficult. She has never taken care of the baby. But as soon as she thought about the decaying divine power that had nourished her body just now, and looked at the image in her hand that she could hardly survive without the care of the mother god, Gaia's goddess was ultimately defeated by her mother. Whether it was the other children who had never been intimate with her before, or the last child who was taken away just now, the vast maternal nature in the heart of the mother Mother Earth could not be relieved. Now that she has such a baby that can inspire her love the most, the Mother Earth ultimately did not choose to abandon this child on the Earth to live and die on her own, but instead brought it back to her own temple. This child also opened his eyes after the Mother God of the Earth placed him in a cradle. Where is this? Just now I seemed to feel a danger and then became weak again, but now it's very safe. Why this child may never know what kind of love his instinctive tendency to seek good fortune and avoid evil has brought him, but it's better not to know about such things. Chapter 2 Empress Dowager's Outgoing You are listening at NovelFull.audio Since bringing back that child, the mother goddess of the earth has finally shed despair and numbness on her face, and has added a little smile. That child is also a born powerful deity, but unfortunately, at the last moment, he gave his divine power to his weak mother deity. Otherwise, this child would at least be a young man. Looking at the little baby brought back and caressing around her temple as if she had never seen anything before, the goddess Gaia felt even more pity in her eyes, and her guilt grew deeper in her heart. As a party involved, Renato was also surprised when he learned about his religious position and name. Of course, he must have never heard of this name. To be precise, apart from this name, his many and miscellaneous memories did not search for anything related to his name. Perhaps his mother deity called himself aware of this situation from birth, but he wanted to say that he should call reincarnation, but forgot to drink mengpa soup. If he's not mistaken, he should have been on a vacation during his school years and felt like going out to eat something delicious, so he embarked on a spontaneous journey towards the restaurant. Unfortunately, during the journey, the plates of the continent moved for some reason, causing cracks in the skyscrapers built by humans. In the end, those skyscrapers turned into countless boulders falling from the sky, including him, and countless others were sent to reincarnation. Anyway, as soon as he closed his eyes and opened them, he became the god of decay, Renato, the thirteenth child nurtured by the gods of the earth and sky, a name that had never been heard of in Greek mythology. However, in this mythological story where both parents and family are extremely indifferent, Soa Xing's mother's love for him is profound. It's like trying to pour all the love that the other twelve brothers and sisters can't do into him. Unfortunately, there are twelve lessons learned from the past. Renato was strictly forbidden by the earth goddess to leave the earth temple and go anywhere outside the temple. In addition, the earth goddess Gaia was extremely indulgent towards him, and he had no doubt that as long as he dared to speak up, the earth goddess was even willing to give him the earth temple they are currently in. After thinking for a while, Renato instinctively knew that he should search for more clergy to make his strength stronger, in order to deal with his cruel father and twelve siblings who had no close relationship with him. But in order to obtain the priesthood, the most important thing is divinity. Burning divinity is the qualification to engage in dialogue with the will of the world. If the content of the dialogue makes the world feel useless, even if it is exaggerated, it will not benefit the world at all. Even though there is a great void in this world, Renato remembers countless natural phenomena or artificially created possibilities that do not exist in this world. However, he is not willing to gamble because he has always lived by the mother god of his own land. If he gambles wrong, even the loving mother god will get angry because of his harm to himself. At that time, he may have a complete childhood, after all, the goddess of the earth reminds him not to try to gain more power until his divine power reaches a certain level. The decaying power is at least enough for him to become a deity with moderate divine power. The earth goddess, who has lost twelve children, does not want her youngest child to be harmed in any way. The current protection is simply suffocating. For example, at this moment. 
Renato strode his short legs to get a crystal plate from the rock table, but his delicate appearance made the mother goddess of the earth subconsciously forget that he was still a deity, and even afraid that he would not be able to hold the crystal plate and remove the weight of the earth from it. Renato even had some doubts whether the rocks in this world were so light. Time flows slowly, and the power of decay is ultimately singular, providing him with a truly subtle divine power that flows through small streams of water. To this day, he is just like a two- or three-year-old child. As a deity with no perception of time, Renato doesn't know how long it has been. This world is still too immature without the sun and moon. The sky emits a bright light in an instant, which is the credit of the goddess of the day, Hermola. And in the next moment, it will become pitch black again due to the power of the goddess of darkness, the great god of Nyx. There is even no reminder of dawn and dusk when the sun and moon alternate. However, as primitive gods and gods who have lived for a long time, those gods still know the speed of the sun, moon, and time. As the wife of the god king of the sky, the goddess of the earth needs to actively search for the god king in the current holy mountain, which is the highest peak in the world, Mount Olympus. In addition to the highest and largest sky temple, the temple above also has twelve small palaces that are less than one-tenth the size of the sky temple, looking like a dog house. The god king of the sky is too arrogant and has no high regard for the twelve powerful children of the titans. Perhaps in the eyes of this deity, bringing these children to Mount Olympus is already his greatest gift. On weekdays, Mount Olympus was dull and lifeless, but today it has a different kind of vitality. Ureno, who is usually violent and unpredictable, is waiting with a smile for the figure to appear at the door, while his twelve children are also eagerly waiting for their mother deity. Mount Olympus only has a hint of vitality when it descends from the beloved god of the Sky King. If it weren't for the fact that there is currently no underworld in this world, many people would probably consider it as the underworld. The earth goddess visits her eleven children who are imprisoned by cruel husbands and used as slaves every once in a while, but now it should be twelve. Ah, my dear earth goddess, my dear queen who shares half of the glory of the god king with me, every day and night reversal makes my longing for you even deeper. But you never spend your care on your poor husband, you only spend all your time on these outsiders. When can your gaze only stay by my side? Uranus saw the shadow of longing in his heart at the door and stood up straight from his divine throne. With a smile, he helped the goddess of the earth to another throne beside him, which was the same height as himself. If it were placed on the face of the goddess of the earth before his twelfth son was taken away, the expression might have softened a bit and she would have started chatting with the god king of the sky. But after all twelve of her children were taken away, the goddess showed no signs of goodwill towards her husband. Oh, Uranus, you know, I don't want to see you. When you married me regardless of my wishes, when you took my children away regardless of my plea, I should know that now I care more about my twelve children. Although Renato stayed by the side of the earth goddess to ease his longing for his child being taken away, this goddess spent more time with Clonus and she also missed his son who had always been with him. The expression on Uranus's face darkened slightly, but the hint of gloom was instantly replaced by joy. Who in the world could be more noble than his wife, a goddess? It's better to make this person lose his temper, so as not to cause him a big uproar without saying a word at any time. You should know that this is the earth goddess who shares the throne of the divine king with him and possesses half of the glory of the divine king. Besides, he is at least the husband of this one. It is appropriate to let this one vent her anger a little bit, just like a small flirtation between them. As for the remaining twelve children, if one of them dares to speak out, then don't blame him for being ruthless. And the twelve titans were naturally extremely happy when they saw their mother gods, but seeing Uranus standing next to them, their fiery hearts instantly cooled down. Yes, no matter what, as long as the god king of the sky was still standing by their side, wanting freedom and peace was simply a pipe dream. But fortunately, under long-term oppression, they are also quite good at regulating themselves. At least let them keep their mother goddess by their side, so they can feel more comfortable and sleep for a while. Chapter 3 Earth 
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. De Colois A.R.A. Trong Quatrin Lay Text. Chapter 4. Ning Fu. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. De Colois A.R.A. Trong Quatrin Lay Text. Chapter 5. The First Step of Becoming Strong. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Just as the reckless girl was about to embrace an elder and deity, a relatively reliable elf finally noticed something was wrong. Ningfu only dies and has only one chance to become a deity, but it does not mean that the elves nurtured by other titans will not have any vision. It is only inevitable that they will be overwhelmed by the kindness in their hearts after seeing the appearance of weakness. A few of them are male, and although the father and god are also full of love for their young form of children, their love tends to be more protective than the kindness that may cause a slight loss of reason, so one of them quickly discovered something was wrong. He quickly grabbed Ningfu, who was about to come forward, and pulled her to his back. Then he respectfully said to Renato, respected deity, please forgive my sister's ignorance. She is often too impulsive. I wonder what you are here for. Having a bit of a brain and a respectful attitude has added a bit of satisfaction to Renato, who used to be an ordinary person. Who wouldn't want to be treated with respect and respect. Renato knew that the world was dangerous, but it didn't stop him from having some feelings for the guy in front of him. However, the joy and arrogance in his heart came and went faster. Renato had seen a powerful primordial god and had been with him for a long time. Although Gaia was often weak, his occasional display of strength was enough to shake a little guy who used to be an ordinary person. This often reminds him how dangerous the world is and to maintain humility in daily life. I'm just fulfilling my ministry everywhere, you don't need to worry. If that slightly clever male elf just thinks that Renato's divinity is too strong and may be a deity, he is now clearly telling him that he is a deity. Ning Fu's face turned a bit pale when she first wanted to move around. They may be the children of the Titans, but when faced with a group of elves who only have appearance but no clergy, their parents do not pay too much attention to them. After all, even the mother of the sea and the father of the ocean are difficult to protect themselves. As the elder brother of the twelve Titans, Okeanos can be said to be the most deeply poisoned by Uranus. Where did he have the energy to manage his own group of non-clergy children? They, who have beauty, can be stripped of everything by any deity with just one sentence. Perhaps only those extremely weak and without background gods will see the face of a certain existence behind them and may not take action for them. After all, the existence of gods is simple, but it is difficult to predict. No one can guarantee that those powerful gods will not suddenly settle accounts that day. Now I only pray that the little deity in front of me has a good personality, or if there is no strong support behind me, I will slightly consider their father and mother gods. After Renato became a god, his mind became much easier to use, and he immediately understood what the other person was thinking. He didn't have much interest in scaring the other person either. The joke was that Renato didn't have a strange habit of casually teasing others by watching them tremble with fear, even though both sides were familiar with each other. Unless they are acquaintances. I'm going to stay here for a while recently. If there's nothing else right now, you can go and do your own thing. Renato is not so domineering, he directly seizes someone else's island. Just those weak elves, if he snatches this island, he is afraid that the other party will die in some corner due to the endless ocean. Besides, his mother god is the earth, and now the mother of the earth loves him extremely. If he really wants an island, just say it out loud. Renato wants to shrink his territory here and leave a divine mark on the bay he is in, symbolizing his residence and warning other gods not to offend his divine authority here. But in order to truly belong to one's own domain, one must also embody the divinity of this bay, that is, the deity of a certain bay or the guardian of a certain bay. This kind of deity is simply like painting the earth as a prison. There is not much to live in that field on weekdays. If one day they are defeated by the backlash of the deity, it can take half a life. If they directly break the deity, usually weak deities will return to their original source. 
After all, the deity is hidden within its body, and its energy when broken is enough to destroy most weak deities. Renato was very impolite in driving people, but he let a group of young and beautiful girls breathe a sigh of relief as if they had been pardoned. Then he walked away quickly. Renato didn't say anything, but after thinking for a moment, he suddenly looked up and said, The great world of Chaos, I hereby declare that the power of decay accompanies the hope of rebirth. Through the nourishment of decay, the earth will bear the fruits of prosperity. Decay is the decay of life that flows with time, the cessation and forgetting of life. Therefore, I should be the god of prosperity, the god of decay, and the god of forgetting. Renato is extremely greedy. But his actions did win the will of the world of Chows and he pondered a little. Subsequently, several divine figures appeared in front of him. They are prosperity, decay, and one unexpected one, greed, but not forgetting. Perhaps the will of the world feels that corruption and forgetting have little to do with each other. There's just one thing that's quite unpleasant, why does even the source of greed cling to him? Are all the gods in this world so simple that they only ask for one by one? Renato doesn't understand, but it's okay. It's time to strengthen oneself now. Renato placed the power of decay on his own origin, and the divine figure was next to decay. As expected, the power of decay covered decay, after all, it was a divine figure with its origin. From then on, decay was no longer the mud that nourishes the earth in the moment it fell. But slowly, under the erosion of time, it undergoes a process of decay, gradually turning into nutrients for the earth. Although the speed has slowed down, there are no hidden dangers in doing so and there will be no other unethical things mixed into the origin of the earth. In a sense, this can also be considered a kind of purification. As for the power of prosperity, Renato did not intend to assimilate it into decay, or rather, it was not yet the time. He had a premonition that the fusion of these two seemingly unrelated forces would bring him a great surprise. In fact, he really wants to integrate the power of greed into decay. Unfortunately, greed is a negative emotion, which is the power of emotions, and can be considered an instinct of life. However, decay is a process after death, a process in which life feeds itself back to the world after death. This is the real natural side, unfortunately, the two forces are really unrelated. Renato wanted to ask for something more, but the will of the world was clearly not waiting for him, but in the blink of an eye, it disappeared completely. Feeling his own lack of divinity, Renato has not yet begun to demand power from the world for the second time. If he were to demand it again with his current divinity, he would probably be unconscious for a long time, and even directly cause his soul to break. It's better not to be so impatient, let's absorb the gains from this time first. Now that Uranus is in power, the concept of prosperity is not actually thriving. Because neither the quantity of life nor the density of vegetation can be considered prosperous. This power focuses on density and prosperity, but it is likely that only Mount Olympus has any connection with this clergy, which results in the divine power provided by this clergy only being at a weak level. If placed in a future full of flowers, it should provide an upper limit of moderate divine power, unfortunately. Greed also relies on quantity. Most of life nowadays is relatively simple, and if it is fear, it should make people instantly become medium divine power. After all, the divine kings in the sky are somewhat unpredictable, so unpredictable that people only have fear and no greed, because they have exhausted all their strength even in life. After putting in a lot of effort for two abilities, they are actually two weak divine powers. Fortunately, his main decaying power has been further perfected, giving him the possibility to go further. After Renato absorbs a period of time to become a god with weak divine power, he will go for a walk and rot everywhere, which is to let those who have already realized death return to the earth. The gods of death and sleep have long been born, and that god of death is a down dot to dot earth model worker. Except for spending some time with his mother, the god of Nyx, during his birth, he later went around harvesting souls with his brother, the god of sleep. Unfortunately, the underworld has not yet been born, but there are too few ordinary lives now, 
and the power of the Grim Reaper is only a weak divine power. After all, he cannot judge the gods, and the most important creatures in this world are only gods. On the contrary, it was his brother Sleepy God. As it was getting dark, the gods were unable to play around, and sleep became a necessary thing to pass the time. It was also necessary to relax one's mind in ignorance. This made it very easy for his brothers to become medium divine powers. Even though they had not been born for more than 100 years, according to the goddess Gaia, it was not easy for a single power to accommodate a medium divine power. After all, Uranus had absorbed too much of the heavenly and earth force, and his share in the world was limited. Renato also needs to act quickly, otherwise he will eat less if others eat more. Unless he waits for the world to advance, it will be too difficult for him to make further progress. Chapter 6 Becoming Strong You are listening at NovelFull.audio When Renato announced something to the will of the world, many gods had some insights, but they didn't really care. The god king of the sky became interested in the little guy who dared to jump out under his rule, but after a brief glance, he didn't pay as much attention to a bug that couldn't be easily killed. Imagine it. A small bug that can be easily killed at a glance, but if it is pressed to death, it will burn a hole in itself, and that hole may continue to spread outward over time. If you don't look at it, you will find that the thing is not a big problem except for occasionally calling. Besides, that guy didn't offend the divine power of the divine king. He never stipulated that no deity in the world was allowed to demand a priesthood from the world of Chows. But did the world actually reject the priesthood forgotten by that little guy? Glancing casually at the relieved memory goddess Menemesine, Uranus suddenly raised a wicked smile. That little bug also looks quite pleasing to the eye. When I grow up, I'll see if I can find someone to be my servant. But now that little appearance is here, it can only cause trouble for me. Why don't you help him? Hee <laughs> hee. As the benevolent king of the gods, I naturally seek some small favors for my subjects. In the name of the god king, I allow the decaying god to have the power of forgetting. Hee <laughs> hee. The divine king is the king of the gods, who governs the existence of the gods. During his reign, the power of speech of the divine king was even less than half of the will of the world, almost equivalent to the will of the world itself. When the divine king spoke, the forgotten power automatically condensed in the air, while taking away some of the power of memory. Menemesine's face turned white, and that small portion of her authority posed no threat to her as a goddess of memory. Even if she lost this power, she could easily aspire to become a great deity in the future. After all, as the memories of life accumulate, her power will continue to grow stronger. Although she possesses the power of forgetting, it will be easier and more powerful. What truly frightened her was why her father, the god King Uranus who ruled the sky, did such a thing. Was it warning her that this goddess of memory had done something wrong? But she doesn't remember what he did. She hasn't even left the Olympus mountain during this time. A huge fear was almost crushing Menemesine. Looking at her trembling daughter, Gaia instinctively wanted to protect her daughter, but when Gaia followed Uranus's gaze and looked into the distance, she was horrified to find her youngest son hidden in the temple appearing on a small island in the ocean for some reason. Fortunately, the distance is too far at this moment, and the divine king in the sky is not very interested. He did not notice the divine power of the earth contained in Renato's body. Otherwise, the divine king in the sky would have easily guessed what had happened. Fortunately, there was no danger, and Renato also gained new strength. As for why Renato was there. You can guess with your but that it was you who had been blocking the will of the world that led to your home being stolen before you knew it. Although she may have done some harm to her daughter, as a powerful deity, Munemesine, even if she lost a little power, it doesn't matter. Compared to her younger brother who was born with only weak divine power, their strength is enough to protect themselves. After some consideration, even if Alalo spoke well in front of him, he would forget when he turned his head. He probably couldn't do anything well either. Instead of doing nothing well, it would be better to give his little son, 
who had lost the protection of his father and mother gods, some protection. Be stronger, even stronger, until no one can harm him. Gaia silently thought in her heart, but she couldn't reveal it, otherwise Uranus would definitely take this last child away. The lost child can come back, but those taken away by Uranus will definitely not come back. Unless there is a change of dynasty. Gaia thought to herself. But now no matter what this mother of all gods thinks, it's useless. She's too weak, and she doesn't even have the power to return to the earth. Fortunately, he and the Divine King haven't given birth to a new deity again, otherwise even ordinary intermediate divine powers would send her away. Now the power of decay is spreading on the earth. As long as it takes some time for herself to regain some strength and Alalos to make some more mistakes, she will have a certain degree of confidence in overthrowing Alalos' cruel and inhumane rule. I hope my youngest son can accelerate his mission on the earth, and I also hope that he can quickly gain enough strength. After experiencing the brutality of Alalos, the goddess of the earth does not really believe that the other children who have been following Alalos are psychologically sound. In order to allow his youngest son to run freely on the earth after falling asleep in his future, Gaia did not want Renato's fate to rely on the breath of others. The gods should be free. However, to what extent can Renato achieve? Gaia is not sure. In front of her, Renato had no opportunity to showcase himself, as he would only be well protected by her and did not need to do anything by himself. At this moment, Goddess Gaia's mood is unclear to Nato. The clash between a group of powerful divine powers is not something that his weak divine power is qualified to blend in with. Nato does not know what those gods are thinking. He just accepts the gift suddenly given to him by the world, which belongs to the field of memory and the power of forgetting. Oh my god, there is also a delay in the world's will. No, I have given the origin of greed, and forgetting can only cause me to get stuck. Is this reasonable? How to evaluate it well? It's really outrageous. Renato thought so. However, he gained some strength for nothing, and Renato didn't have much dissatisfaction either. It was like being tripped on the roadside, and he looked up and said, hee hee, bricks. Most people don't feel angry about this kind of good thing. Anyway, Renato doesn't know what the other person's situation is, he just feels like that ordinary person. The priesthood is bestowed by the world, and Renato merged with new powers without expending much effort. The level of divine power has also been slightly elevated to a weaker level. Although he is still a useless warrior, at least he will not be helpless with the actions of other gods. The current ruler is Uranus of the sky, so the sky occupies a large amount of heaven and earth elemental power. The divine king has also achieved the legendary closest level to the primitive god, the great divine power. In addition, the twelve children of the god king also occupy a share of the twelve powerful divine powers, which means that there is not much room for other gods in the world to improve, unless one day Uranus is kind enough to share some of his own occupied share, or a certain god returns to the origin of the world. However, these possibilities are too low, and Renato thinks it is better to let him work hard to collect divine powers on his own. Anyway, except for the twelve titans, as well as the sky, sea, hills, and a small number of primordial gods, most of the gods are just weak divine powers now. Although Renato is weak now, he has finally escaped the danger period. Now he is safe, at least facing ordinary gods is quite safe. As long as he does not enter the deep sea and encounters the five brothers and sisters representing the five sides of the ocean, the great god Pentos, at least this is the only way Renato can think of a death with resistance within it. The result is still unsafe. Chapter 7 Expansion of Power You are listening at NovelFull.audio After arriving at this unnamed island, Renato did not have much contact with other life forms, and the Ningfu who first saw him dared not come to see him later. In fact, Renato is a bit puzzled. His appearance is cute, he is a natural deity, and he himself has no malice. Why are those Ningfu still so afraid of him? It's really puzzling. 
but it's okay. Renato is not afraid of loneliness. The laws and priesthood have infinite mysteries, and the power contained in the priesthood of prosperity without its origin is enough to make people feel dizzy and mesmerized. This can be as exciting as any addictive plant. That is a vast, mysterious, and desirable field. A brand new and unknown vast world in front of a deity holding a priesthood is like a girl who is ready to refuse and welcome, as if firmly rejecting you, making it difficult for you to see clearly, but occasionally revealing some images that make you unable to move your eyes. Sensing the laughter and joy in the distance, the joy of those little elves playing happily together is so simple. Ningfu are naturally good at singing and dancing, but this primitive and desolate world makes them unable to understand the melody and lyrics. But this is not difficult for these Ningfu. The elves born in nature try to imitate the sound of collisions between rocks, the rustling sound generated by the friction between leaves, and the tinkling sound of water splashing and re-entering the lake and sea rocks when the gods play in the water. This is like a legendary utopia. There is no sorrow, no sadness, no oppression, and no one will bully others. They don't need to worry about survival, because even if only half belong to the gods, they still don't have to worry about food. They can enjoy themselves to the fullest, because their hearts are pure white, no one has a utilitarian heart, no one has dark thoughts. They can sing and dance, because time cannot leave obvious marks on them. Ningfu's almost eternal youth and long life, without worries or annoying negative emotions, they can enjoy life extremely purely. Perhaps these Ningfu themselves do not understand the meaning of life, but the joy at this moment is so real. Renato was somewhat envious. After all, there has never been such a pure white and delightful scene in his world. Unfortunately, they are not brothers by blood. Unfortunately, he has become a deity and cannot integrate into the gatherings of these elves. If he goes there, he will only turn these singing and dancing scenes into memories, after all, its existence is too easy to make these weak Ningfu feel constrained. Hey, Renato couldn't help feeling a bit down. Perhaps there is an unknown world waiting for him to explore, but as a creature with seven emotions and six desires, he still wants to find a small group, after all, living alone on this island will inevitably feel a bit lonely. But there is not a deity here. Even loneliness has turned into loneliness. The power of the origin responds to the mood of the holder. Due to the presence of the god of prosperity, the flowers, plants, and trees that have become lush began to slowly gather their beautiful side, while the withered branches and rotten leaves that have fallen on the earth as a preparatory force for the earth goddess also began to emit an unpleasant smell, which is the smell of decay. This smell does not belong to the fragrance of life's joy and acceptance, but rather a foul smell, a reminder to other lives that there is a little creature here who has lost its mobility and whose soul has been taken away by the god of death, and is pitifully returning to the embrace of the earth. If it's just an ordinary clergy, even if their mood is extremely bad, they need to actively communicate with the clergy to achieve it, because they exist like agents. But Renato belongs to the primordial deity, and the existence of such deities is due to their birth, which gives birth to a certain natural phenomenon, equivalent to mastering the existence of a certain phenomenon. Noble, and their emotions can easily resonate with some kind of resonance in their own field. For example, at this moment. Renato's mood was actually just a little low for a while, but even though his mood began to slowly rise, the stench around him did not seem to disappear at all. Instead, he slowly spread this law until in the end, the foul-smelling priesthood descended from the sky and inexplicably penetrated into the decaying priesthood and origin. From now on, the process of returning to life after death is no longer spent in peace, but accompanied by a foul odor that symbolizes death. This unprecedented odor immediately spread throughout the world, disrupting the peaceful lives of countless people. After all, the weakness of the earth has caused a large amount of vegetation to wither, and now there are not many plants left on the earth, but many plant remains. The Ningfu or deities living in the places where these plants are abundant have been attacked by this smell, and they are all suffering from it. 
At the same time, they also have a lot of resentment towards the culprits who caused this scene. Unfortunately, the God of Decay has never declared its existence to the world, and they don't know what to do if they want to fight back. Renato, who unintentionally caused trouble for life on the earth, was unaware of this. He only felt lonely for a moment before beginning to appreciate the wonders of the natural world. The power of prosperity cannot be perfectly reflected in him. It seems that something needs to be done, such as cultivating some plants or injecting some vitality into the earth to increase the number of life. I don't know if his prosperity will continue to grow stronger after the construction of human society, and eventually become a deity-like civilization. However, as a child of the two natural forces of the sky and the earth, Renato can only be equally close to the forces of nature, just like the current prosperity. In more detail, he should be called the god of plant prosperity, and it is even difficult to approach the range of living things as a whole. Next, Renato plans to make the power of prosperity complete, hoping that complete prosperity will allow him to further advance and at least have the qualification to enter the medium divine power. As for the odor used for reminders, although it may not be considered friendly to others, it cannot be denied that even without providing a priesthood for its owner, it reinforces decay and makes the process more detailed. Unconsciously, even the source of decay has expanded outward a bit. The will of the world is happy about this. The decay that accompanied the birth of Renato may not sound very good, and can even be said to be quite bad. But when it comes to human behavior, it's like turning and used scrap metal into money again. Selling junk may not be considered good in the eyes of some people, but it cannot be denied that it is a way to turn waste into treasure. The world has just been born, not even two or three hundred thousand years ago, with a small number of deities and various religious positions, appearing somewhat diverse. These are mostly phenomena that emerge together with the birth of the world. But none of these people's clergy will provide assistance to the world, they are simply carrying out their duties. The power of turning waste into treasure brought by Renato and him naturally surprises the world. However, the improvement of the decaying source is too little now, and there has been no direct change. Renato is not someone who has been staring at the source inside his body. As a result, as someone who holds the source, he has no idea that the source has been improved. At the same time, the goddess Gaia, who was far away on Mount Olympus, slowly opened her eyes and glanced at the place where Nada was, revealing a pleased smile. As the earth-carrying decay, the mother goddess of Renato, the glory of the god of decay also applies to the goddess Gaia. If it were in its heyday, the primitive gods themselves may not necessarily be able to feel that weak change. It can only be said that Gaia is currently in a state of decline, and even such a slight increase can make her feel happy. Or perhaps it's because a mother sees her child out of control and, although worried, still feels proud of her child after achieving certain results. As for the divine king of the sky. Although Renato was glanced at by him, it was only a momentary impulse, and he had no idea that he still had a child wandering outside. Moreover, the power of the sky is completely different from decay. The glory of the god of decay naturally has little effect on the sky. And now this era is under the rule of the sky. There are no sun, moon, or twinkling stars in the sky, and no cloud dares to block the eyes of the divine king. Although the range contained in the sky has not continued to grow, the daily divine power provided is still extremely considerable. So that kind of tiny change the god king doesn't even care about, he just thinks that one of his twelve children has received a little improvement. Chapter 8 Neighbors' Reactions You are listening at NovelFull.audio After a period of silence, Renato became much more diligent than other deities who preferred pleasure over self.improvement. Since leaving the temple on the earth, Renato has been contemplating his own ministry. Unfortunately, Building a car behind closed doors ultimately made it difficult for him to go further. His divine power was elevated to a weak one, and then he could only allow it to develop freely. Only now, when there is nothing to do, do Renato have time to observe the appearance of the island he is currently on. There is no concept of sand in the world, 
so it seems strange that rocks and land directly border the ocean. Or perhaps it's just that his future life, returning to the past, looks a bit strange, anyway, other lives are quite accustomed to such scenes. There is no beach. The types of plants here are also pitiful. There are only three or two huge trees that were born together with the world and spread throughout the world. At first glance, it looks towering with ancient trees and tangled roots. Upon closer inspection, apart from the oak, banyan, and pine trees, Renato was unable to find a fourth type of tree at the level of law and origin. Due to the birth of the god of hills in the world, this small island can have some hills and pools. There is a clear spring near the center of the small island, which was naturally born together with Gaia, the mother of the earth, when she gave birth to her eldest son. In this early period, if a little elf could see that spring, it should be able to become the god of mountain springs with that spring water. Looking further aside, finally there is good news. Next to it is a small grapevine winding around a huge pine tree, bearing some small green fruits. Of course, the taste of this wild grape is not delicious, and it is extremely sour. Upon closer inspection, it can be observed that if the trees were not tall and large, this small island could even be considered as having scarce vegetation. To put it nicely, everything here is simplified. To put it harshly, this place is really poor. Renato suppressed his desire to roll his eyes. The trees that have not been kissed by the god of wisdom on their foreheads are so dull, not to mention beautiful, they do not even possess the qualities of life such as speech and movement. The god of prosperity naturally cannot tolerate such a depression. Although he doesn't have any weapons or anything like that, it's not just a scepter that can unleash his power. Prosperous deities stroll among the mountains and forests. Wherever he walked, tender shoots of grass and trees sprouted up one after another, as well as young seedlings of trees. The flourishing divinity of light green plants began to spread around. Renato even had a feeling that as long as he was willing, he could even reclaim the prosperity here. For the first time actively exerting the power of a deity, Renato's strong curiosity belonging to the deity was aroused. At this moment, he was like a child who had obtained a new toy, wanting to exert as much of his own power as possible. Prosperity is a good thing everywhere, and nothing can refuse one's own growth. But when the power of prosperity is too great, it can also bring some troubles, big or small. For example, at this moment, Renato, who was immersed in his own great power, was suddenly awakened by bursts of screams. He felt a little displeased in the heart of the god of prosperity, who had disturbed his interest, but this feeling was quickly suppressed by him. Through the plants he nurtured, his gaze projected towards the direction of screaming. It's the Ningfu people who were scared by him on the first day. Due to the rapid and massive growth of the plants, these fairies, who only have beauty but no combat power, are unable to escape after being entangled and injured by the plants. At least they are also half-gods, yet they are so weak. Renato frowned slightly and let out a light sigh. It seems that it is still somewhat difficult to unleash one's divine power anytime and anywhere without restraint. Encountering these weak Ning Fu requires some caution to avoid accidentally sending them away. There is no concept of a world after death yet, and once you die, you really die. Coincidentally, he had just tested his own power and was not as interested anymore. Therefore, the god of prosperity dispersed himself and regained the power that belonged to prosperity. The wildly growing trees no longer continued to squeeze the living space of the Ningfu people. On the other side of the island, Ning Fu, who had found a small life, finally breathed a sigh of relief. Seeing the young Ning Fu who was strangled for half his life, her sisters were indignant, but at the thought of the scene just now, the anger that had just risen quickly disappeared into deep fear. They don't know why that deity suddenly did such a thing. Did they provoke the mystery? But they haven't even gone to find that god. With fear of the gods and anger towards her brother's injuries, the oldest female Ningfu stood up and said. My brothers and sisters, it seems that we need to communicate with this deity who has come to our island. If I cannot come back, 
you must listen to my brother's words well and not continue to be stubborn in the future. No. The injured young man struggled to stand up. The world of Chows has a more relaxed approach to men's power acquisition, but primitive desires also make most gods too promiscuous. I don't know if this is the case this time. It's too dangerous for you to go, so let me go. What are you talking about? Now you are so hurt. If the god is unhappy, not only you will be in danger, but also other sisters will not be able to avoid it. Why don't I go? Even if the result is no better than to be a lover for the god, we are just natural spirits, and the father and mother gods have no empty control over us. How can we think of being lovers for such a young god? Although youth is the reality of the current world of Chows, as an elder sister, how could she let her younger brothers and sisters take risks? Besides, what she said earlier was also correct. Not to mention the small appearance of that deity, the soul may not be eroded by primitive love. Even if you really want to be a lover for that deity, wouldn't it be an excellent choice for these devout elves? Not to mention anything else, children of gods are more likely to have divinity. And if there is such a relationship, there is more possibility of his younger brother and sister being deified, even as relatives of others. You should know that the ratio between God and Ningfu is not average. Anyway, if these Ningfu really embrace the thigh of a deity, even if it's not beneficial, when other monsters attack in the future, they will have to look more or less at the face of the deity behind them. Young people clearly know this truth, but these Ningfu people don't love one deity just because they see one. What if it's not the ideal type in their hearts that delays them for a lifetime? Or what if the god's own scum attribute explodes and you just leave after playing? Even if Ningfu is beautiful, she will only be looked up by the gods when she is pure. Otherwise, she is just a toy left over by others. How could the arrogant god pick up what others have left behind? The two argued endlessly, and neither of them wanted to take a step back. Youth may die if they go, while their elder sister may lose her purity if she goes. Now we have reached the crucial one or two stage. I can't blame them for thinking everything bad, after all, the gods of this world, the bottom line is indeed it's quite flexible. Sometimes their taste is also very strange. If it's just looking at some handsome men and women, it's okay. But it's outrageous to be attracted to some strange and bizarre monsters that can also give birth to offspring. Renato was completely unaware of this matter, and he was not interested in seeing those elves that had nothing to do with him. Just now, after unleashing his prosperous divine power recklessly, he had a new understanding. He wanted to take the opportunity to promote his prosperous divine nature to a more perfect level. Although he had just looked at his future living environment, he was about to close down again. It seems that occasionally moving is indeed a good thing. Renato finally thought of it, but this time he didn't realize much, and he just chose to deepen and solidify it for fear of forgetting it. It is estimated that one or two days will be enough. Chapter 9 Family Members You are listening at NovelFull.audio It was another ten days of solitary contemplation alone, and Renato had some gains, but really not much. This is still because in his previous life, he had a vast world developed by countless predecessors through their own efforts over the past decade, which served as a reference for him. This allowed him to gradually improve his abilities in just ten days. If it were placed on other gods, the effort that can be obtained in these ten days is estimated to be infinitely equal to zero. Alas, unfortunately, Law does not simply turn an idea into reality for no reason. Instead, it requires me to have a certain degree of achievement in a certain field in order to be qualified to seek new priesthood and origin from law. Otherwise, in this empty world of sky, whether it is the imagination of stars or the changes in celestial phenomena, or the changes in seasons, these are incredibly powerful priesthood. Renato was a bit frustrated, although he knew many natural phenomena that were immediately apparent to him, and these abilities had nothing to do with his authenticity. He is a child of the sky and the earth, naturally belonging to the natural and life sides. 
but the natural phenomena it represents are decay and prosperity. The only thing that is somewhat related to these two abilities is the change of seasons. The power of prosperity may be able to build an autumn priesthood, but the power of decay is a bit mysterious. Decay is the process of things rotting and transforming into their initial nourishment, nourishing the earth. However, in the four seasons, only winter is the season that feeds back on the earth. The other three seasons are the season when life is active on the earth. However, no matter how one looks at it, this season requires priests like ice and snow as prerequisites. The result now is that we can only try to let the power of prosperity evolve into the possibility of autumn. The abundant fruits of autumn are also the prosperity of vegetation, as if it has a slight connection with summer. It seems that these things need to be carefully pondered. Suddenly, with a new thought, Renato's somewhat conflicted heart was instantly opened up, and the discomfort of being stuck in a small place for more than ten days had weakened a lot. Now, he even had the mood to rush out and take a spin. When this decaying deity walked out of the small cave where he lived, he saw two figures at first glance who shouldn't have come to him. They were the two shuining fuss, and it was unclear whether they were saltwater or freshwater children, or children from the deep sea. Forget it, what does it have to do with the child of this land? He had never met his elder brother or sister, nor had he ever spoken to the ruler of the deep sea, Pontos. Although these elves could also be called his nephews and nieces, he couldn't bring up any family affection. Elves of the ocean, tell me your purpose. Although I don't feel like I should be the uncle of these two sea elves, my seniority is also there. Although the world of Chows doesn't care about seniority at all, there is still a little rule that constantly pays attention to those few primordial gods. Renato doesn't know if this world has its own will or a program without much emotion, but no matter what, the nobility of gods is higher than that of Ningfu. This kind of existence that only has the blood of gods but cannot have the power of gods makes most people with religious positions subconsciously underestimate them. Although Renato is cultured, he is not very enthusiastic toward strangers. In this situation, the best way is to bring the pride of the gods to the surface and let these little creatures who are not familiar with the assumption that he is seeking help give up. By the way, in this era of gods who are often in their tens or hundreds of years old, are you much younger than them? Renato slightly differentiated his mind, but immediately put his brain back in place. It can be seen that both of those elves are very nervous. Renato even suspected that as long as he dared to raise his hand, those two little ones would kneel in front of him in an instant. In order to send these two guys away earlier, Renato's expression softened a lot and his voice softened a bit. You don't have to be nervous. You are the sea elves nurtured by both saltwater and freshwater. I have some connections with those two to some extent. If we calculate carefully, I can still count you as your uncle. Renato said that although the two ocean nymphs nodded in agreement, it was clear that they would not take such a statement from the god seriously. Life in this era is simple, but it doesn't mean they are idiots. Without any emotional foundation, do you still want to climb high with the gods who have already flown onto the branches and become phoenixes? If you dare to take it seriously, you will be the best joke of the year. However, the gods spoke up, and if the two of them stuttered again, it was inevitable that the gods would decrease their perception of them. In order to ensure the safety of herself and her sisters, Ning Fu, as a male, rushed before the other Ning Fu spoke up. Great deity, please have mercy on me. I am willing to be by your side and exist as your family. Please show a little kindness to protect this fragile island in the sea, and protect the kind and innocent sea elves above from the dangers of the ocean. As she spoke, Naining Fu knelt directly on the ground, causing Renato to be slightly shocked. Is there a mistake? In his concept, kneeling to the sky and to the ground, there are parents and elders between heaven and earth. In addition, if he kneels recklessly, it will break the rules. It looks so strange to see a young man who is more than him kneeling in front of his three-year-old body with a thud. As for what he said. Renato is not sick. What does he do when he has nothing free to collect a small island that is not wealthy? 
Say it again. The world of Chows belongs entirely to the Supreme Source. In addition, the ocean returns to Pontus in the sea and the deep sea vein beneath Pontus. Later, he added his elder brother from the ocean and the elder sister of the goddess of the sea. The sky forever belongs to the god King Uranus of the sky, while the earth has always belonged to the mother goddess Gaia of the earth. Even if she is currently the only son of the goddess Gaia walking on the earth, it does not mean that a deity outside of the earth god is qualified to invade the territory of the earth, and it is still without notification. Even if that goddess loves him so much, she will still feel a little dissatisfied. From any perspective, it seems that he is not very legitimate enough to accept this island. So why did he agree to such an unreasonable request? Is it just because one family member cannot succeed? Renato admits that he just looks a bit silly and sweet, but he is not really an idiot. He still has some understanding of the current situation in the world of Chows. Natural gods are extremely rare, but the number of sea monsters and elves born on the ground is extremely large. How many elves would be willing to serve as tea and water attendants under the command of a noble primordial deity like Renato, as long as he is willing to speak up? Even if there is a deity who is somewhat related to his priesthood but does not have his own deity, it is not impossible to be a relative around him, it is completely meaningless. But is it not good to refuse directly? Renato looked at the young man kneeling on the ground, and then at the girl next to him who was already anxious and about to die. After a moment of silence, he slowly spoke up. I won't accept a useless relative. Ningfu is still too weak for me, let alone letting me be the guardian god of this island with empty hands. It's too high for me, right? All right, you make a verbal contract with me. I know there is a place where you can obtain a priesthood, and it is on this island. If you are willing to offer it to me after obtaining the priesthood, I promise to protect this island. Of course, you can also refuse to give it to me, after all, that power is not very important to me. Renato smiled and said that he was thinking of the priesthood of spring water, which also belongs to the power of water. But he definitely has no idea about it. Please, there are three great gods at the end of the water on his head. Okeanos, symbolizing fresh water and rivers, lakes, and seas, is his elder brother. There is also the wife of Okeanos, who symbolizes the goddess of saltwater, the sea goddess Thesis. Not to mention the great god Pontus, who lived in the same era as the god king of the sky. These three represent freshwater, saltwater, and the ocean, respectively. Although there is only one great being who possesses the original artifact, the rest are already infinitely close to greatness. These three are all the vertices of water, and Lenato, a power from the earth and sky, wants to insert into the power of the ocean. Isn't this a joke? So his original intention was only to use the priesthood of spring water to send this little nephew away. After obtaining the divine name, if he forcibly stripped himself of his priesthood, he would definitely face unclear backlash. Moreover, after possessing the power of God, it would be too difficult for someone to become an elf with little resistance. Rinawudo did not believe that his nephew, a sea elf who had only seen two sides, had such perseverance. At that time, it was he who was unwilling to hand over the priesthood to himself, and he couldn't blame himself for not sheltering this island. Besides, didn't he indirectly hand over the priesthood of the spring god to them? What's left is none of his business. The smiling god of decay thought this way, and his mouth was still working hard, slowly telling the story of the current vacancy of the spring god, almost sending the god directly to the two younger generations. Looking at the two young people leaving, Renato stretched lazily and suddenly didn't want to go out. As expected, there was nothing wrong with staying in his small cave. As long as he went out, he would inevitably encounter some trouble. Let's go back to our house again. Chapter 10 Becoming a God You are listening at NovelFull.audio After leaving the residence of the God of Decay, Ningfu's siblings went to the place instructed by the god. As the god of decay said, they found a spring and a grapevine with several green and astringent fruits. 
Renato has no idea about the power of water, because the tolerance for water in Renato's divinity is too rare. As for the grapevine. Renato has already carved a part of the concept of grapes into his priesthood. This plant itself is contained in decay, and even if he obtains this priesthood, it is of no use. He is also not interested in this ability that cannot attack or defend. It is better to leave the opportunity to other little elves who have not yet become gods. In fact, it is also because the conditions for obtaining the priesthood of grapes are too lenient. Renato is not interested in exploring whether other gods have the priesthood of grapes, after all, every request to the law requires burning his own divinity. The first time is the most painful, and other times it's basically like disappearing out of thin air. But this is not a reason to waste one's own strength in vain. It's not worth going to the law to demand a priesthood for a less powerful force, and it may also offend a deity, strong or weak. The most important thing is that the priesthood of plants does not match much with their overall abilities. And if he remembers correctly, the power of many plants actually belongs to his older brother, the god of growth, who possesses growth power. Although it is a powerful divine power and does not yet possess a terrifying original artifact, it is after all a divine spirit that has perfectly matched the source of growth since its birth. In addition, it is enslaved by the divine king of the sky every day. Who knows if this god of growth has any resentment in his heart and wants to punish some little elves who dare to offend his field. Renato explained his words clearly to the siblings, and it doesn't matter whether they chose to listen to his advice and not have too much bias towards the power of glucose to avoid being accidentally disposed of, or whether they were lucky enough to obtain this power. Renato would not be afraid of the gods born of two such weak gods. Perhaps he himself is not a very powerful deity, but at least he had a moment of moderate divine power, and coupled with the fact that the decaying deity itself has certain attack abilities, such as springs and grapes, he is not very good at combat. Those who possess power can always be more reckless. But the siblings, who were completely unaffected, were now caught in a dilemma. As the younger brother, the male looked at his sister who was clearly tempted by the power of the deity but difficult to speak up about. He also looked at a grapevine that could lead to death danger, and another one that even if controlled, belonged to their father and mother without any threat. The parents of the ocean, the deity, were particularly tolerant towards their children. But these sea elves are just simple, not idiots. The two siblings each had their own thoughts, and after a while, as the younger brother, Ning Fu's gaze suddenly became firm. I saw him take a step forward, and the divine spirit that had been hovering within the elf's body was gathered in his chest. A faint flame ignited it, symbolizing the divine purity and ruling power of the gods. This is the world's recognition of God's rule over the world of Chows. The great Okeanos, the father deity of rivers, lakes, and seas, prays to you for the Ningfu in the sea. The spring is the outlet of the earth's water, the natural place that emerges to the surface, and is a link on the earth. I am the excavator of the spring water, please bestow upon your child the deity of the spring water. Renato is not far from the place where the spring god prays, so naturally he can hear it clearly. This explanation of the spring water is somewhat hasty. If Renato had enough water attribute divinity, he could obtain at least two or more deities through a prayer. After all, that little guy has his father, the water god Okeanos, on his head, and at least those who can become gods at this time have a certain talent. After thinking about it, the owner of Tamsui will not care about that tiny divinity. So simple and not greedy at all, this child is really hard to evaluate. This may be because the god of greed, who has the origin of greed, is too greedy, but it is also fulfilling his own divine duty, isn't it? And the screen rotates. The sworn sea elf is now covered by divine fire, and this golden-red sacred flame burns every piece of his flesh and bones, using his divinity as fuel. The divine nature of the soul of Unicom is burned, and its pain is no less than cutting off pieces of flesh from the body. In this process, the glory belonging to the gods will cover the weak elves, and those who, in addition to their characteristics of immortality and having a long life, will also be given immortality. 
That is a characteristic that every god must possess, even if their heads are removed, their lives can be extended to some extent. However, it seems that although the spring water is very weak, it is not something that can be given to others with just a few words. Leonardo, a natural deity, does not know what kind of pain the transformation of gods will experience, after all, they are born but never die. Of course, he still has some speculations, otherwise he wouldn't have proposed asking the other party to exchange the deity as an item. How could the power obtained through such pain be easily handed over? In this way, he will definitely be able to live a carefree life for a period of time. And the sea elf, as her sister, looked at her painful younger brother with a slightly strange expression. If you feel heartbroken, that's for sure. They were born together, experiencing countless changes of day and night. But as the lives of the world of Chows, the gods have a fatal temptation for them. If the god of decay only tells his brother this method, he will not say anything, only sincerely wish. But since both of them have the possibility of competing at the same time, losing such qualifications directly now, and there is no negative emotion at all, it is also deceiving. However, over the years, emotions have finally overcome a hint of jealousy and unwillingness. Although negative emotions are born, they are fleeting. Ning Fu gazed back at her painful brother, hoping that such pain would end quickly, at least not tormenting the child again.